worship God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father God, we come before your throne of grace. Father God, we come before your throne of grace. God, as we speak from your word, O oh God, we admit that we are nobody, O oh God. We are unworthy vessels, O oh God, but through the Holy Spirit, we are going to be valiant, O oh God, jump through walls and do miraculous works for the kingdom of God, O oh God, because it's the Holy Spirit that works through us, O oh God. Let it be an experience to hear you, Holy Spirit, speak to us, O oh God. Touch each one of our hearts and let it be a favorable, sweet, savoring sacrifice to you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While I was praying to see what we want to preach or what we want to talk about it. God gave a promise, but every promise in the Bible comes with an if. The promise is spiritual inheritances, spiritual treasures, just like our bank balances, right? When we start working, we build our bank balances at zero. But when we mess up, when we have a big emergency or something happens to the house or we have to clear out the bank balances, we rebuild it again, right? Just like that, the Holy Spirit has been reminding me in my personal life that, and for all of us too this morning, that we are Pentecostals, we are children of God, but we have a tendency to come every Sunday before Holy Communion and keep asking forgiveness for the same things we keep doing for probably decades. And, and Holy Spirit wants to break that chain, break that bondage, and truly give us spiritual growth, not just to ask forgiveness, but to build on what God has given us and to truly do amazing for the kingdom of God. And that is where we are heading. But before we head there, all the things that we need to let go, as I want all of you to continue to close your eyes and pray. Remember this past week. Remember the past weeks. Remember a few decades from now. What were the sins that you confessed on that Sunday a few decades ago? Is that the same sins that you're confessing right now when you take Holy Communion? Is there a change in your spiritual growth? If there is not, ask and pray and cry out. Holy Spirit, truly bring us a change so that we do not make those same mistakes. The topic, the he heading is spiritual inheritances. It says, Holy Spirit bonds and builds our spiritual treasures and influence. So if we go to the next slide, it continues to talk about we all have a choice. We have a choice. And in, in the Old Testament, the choice that the, the Israelites were given was blessing or curse. Right? Deuteronomy. 30, 19, and 20 says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. So it, it's for us to choose what we want to do with our lives. Do we want to continue to be these, this child of God who just comes and asks forgiveness and just starts over, starts over, starts over, and doesn't get to a place where we're truly fruitful for the kingdom of God, right? Or are we going to be that child of God that, it's not just about asking forgiveness, but it's about growing, growing further so that we can truly take the kingdom of God to the heights that God has promised us to do, right? Every promise that God has given each one of you from your childhood, has that come true in your life? Spiritual promises, or are you just in that same state of repetitive forgiveness? So in the New Testament, we have all read about the parable of the sower. If you, if you show up that picture, you know, we, we all heard about the, the word, the seed, like falling on the road and on the, on the weed and all that. We have all read that. But there's a verse that we, we sometimes miss at the end. If you show um, Mark 4, 9, at the end of the parable, right before it ends, Mark 4, 9, it says, and he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear, after the parable. So we again have a choice in the New Testament too. 
are we willing to truly hear, not just hear, but truly do what the kingdom of God is asking us to do, what our promises in our life is asking us to do, right? So if I'm not going to spend a lot of time, and uh, there are a lot of slides, I'm going to go through a lot of it quickly, but get to a place at the end where we pray and we fill in the Holy Spirit so that truly God brings a change, an eternal change in our lives, and we're not just repetitive forgiveness people like a lot of churches out there are doing. We go to a, every week go to a priest, confess, and we keep doing the same things over again, thinking we'll do it again and again and again. That is not what God has called us for, right? So next slide talks about sins we mostly forget when we confess before Jesus. It's a big list, right? There are a lot of verses. Colossians 3, 5 talks about a big list, but I'm going to pick up on a few things that we miss. We ask to, we forget to ask forgiveness about impurity. When we, when we confess our sins every week, how many of you remember doing a confession of impurity? God, forgive me for my impurity. Forgive me for my lust. Forgive me for my greed. All that is accounted as idolatry. It's like going in front of a graven image. So all the sins that we are so tiny that we don't even remember doing it, those are the things that God is trying to remind us today. Right? Continue to go. I'm going to go through Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Talks about the acts of the flesh that are obvious. I'm not going to pick up all. It talks about hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, factions. Most problems in Pentecostal churches or in Christian churches, the moment the Holy Spirit starts working, the moment we start to see growth, we see divisions in church, factions in church, people talking behind their, someone's back. It's the devil who speaks to certain people and creates factions. So if you are one of those people, if with any of these sins, it's time for you to ask forgiveness from God. And not just forgiveness, but truly repent of it so that you will never do that again in your life. Right? The other thing that the Holy Spirit is reminding us is Ephesians 4, 26, 29, and 31. We know all these verses, so I'm going to do it quickly so that I can get to the end where God has kept a promise for us. In your anger, do not sin. We forget that we are Pentecostals. We can get angry. angry being angry is not, is, is not bad. But many a times when we get angry, we say things that a pe true Pentecostal, true child of God should never say. Especially to our family members. Especially to our best friends. Especially it could be between a father and a son. It could be between a, a mother and a son. It could be between parents and children. It could be between in-laws. It could be between brothers and sisters. When we get angry, the amount of hurt that comes out of our mouth, that can leave an eternal curse. It can get into a DNA of, of our but today when we ask forgiveness, ask forgiveness for that so that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God breaks every curse that was set upon us that we set out with our mouths to our children or to our parents and break that curse in the name of Jesus. All right? All right. Things that, that continue to do. Any unwholesome talk. Any unwholesome talk that we have ever talked Right? Continue. I'm not reading the whole list. Bitterness. Do we have bitterness as a child of God? Do we have bitterness against our family members? Do we have bitterness against someone in our church who did bad to us? We know we were right, but they did wrong. But what are we doing? We are carrying that bitterness. We don't remember. We don't understand that because we have not forgiven that person, we are the ones carrying that curse of bitterness. Every time we see that person, we do not want to shake their hands. We do not want to smile at them. We do not want to invite them over to lunch. Why? Because we are carrying that curse of bitterness. So right now, if there is any kind of a bitterness among any one of you, among your relatives, if someone has taken your land which was not supposed to be theirs, we have bitterness against them. As Pentecostals, we are called to do above and beyond. So even when we are right, we are called to not have bitterness. Right? I'm going to continue fast. Rage and anger. Slander. And another word for slander is gossip. 
right? Do we talk bad about people? They, they might have done bad things, but are we allowed as Christians to keep talking about them to everyone else out there, right? So if you are one of those, every form of malice. I'm going to continue. Mark eleven twenty five. If you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. That is what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do right now, right? We confess about things that we remember, but we never remember about the things that people have done bad to us or the things that we haven't forgiven others even when they were the ones who were right or wrong. It doesn't matter, right? So that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. So if you, as a child of God, want your sins to be forgiven, what do you need to do? The verse says, forgive others first, right? We're going to continue. Ephesians 4.30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. That is the only sin that Jesus says will not be forgiven against you if we grieve the Holy Spirit, right? So this is the time. Continue to pray while you're listening to me. Click, close your eyes if you want to in your heart. Continue to remember. If the Holy Spirit is today reminding each one of us. We invite the Holy Spirit to move into our cold, hard-hearted hearts right now. Every bondage of Satan, every, every forgiveness, we break it in the name of Jesus. today. We carry bitterness from decades, from what our relatives did 20 years ago, 30 years ago, what our friends at church did a few weeks ago, for a few months ago. Break that bondage if you want to be blessed, if you want to be used by the kingdom of God, if you want to be used through the power of the Holy Spirit, get rid of everything that is burdening you, that is stopping you from growing. It doesn't matter what the other person does. What matters to God is how you carry your heart in front of God. That's all that matters to God. John 1 29. John, John, when John saw Jesus, he said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We are in the presence of the Lamb of God this morning. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Children, are we going to confess our sins truly to the Lamb of God so that He can truly not just take away our sins, but take away every curse that was put upon us through our sins? I'm going to quickly go through the next slide, consequences of sin. Not going to go dwell into all that. First consequence of sin is separation from God. Isaiah 59 two says, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. If you want your prayers to be answered, not just as, as Brother Shabu said yesterday, when we pray for our children, we cry out. But we never pray for the nation. We never pray for our friends. We never pray for our church members. We never pray for everyone else who is here and that, with that same burden. If you want your prayers to be heard, the Holy Spirit is reminding us to come close to God. Do not let any of your sin, how small it is, doesn't matter. Big sins are out there. Most of us probably may not do it. But small sins, we are so used to doing it. Let's get rid of it. Disrupting God, it talks about the explanation, talks about disrupting the intimate relationship intended by the Creator. God has created us. So that we can have an intimate relationship with him. If you and I have not heard the voice of God today. Being Pentecostals. The true voice of God. Then it's a good reminder today right now. That God is yearning. God is yearning to be intimate with us. God is yearning to talk to us. God is yearning to use us. Are we willing to surrender? Death. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We know these verses. It not just leads to physical death, but spiritual death. Eternal separation from our God. Conscience and guilt. Romans 2.15 says, Their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them. So it's not just other people. It's not the angels. Our own conscience 
will bear witness to God about how we lived. Even if we do sins behind closed doors, even when we call someone else, hey, I heard this. Do not say this to anyone else. I'm just saying it to you. If you are that person, your conscience will make God remember every time you gossiped about someone else. Broken relationships, gossip and slander, repeat the matter separates, repeats the matter separates close friends. Loss of peace. There is, if there is no peace, Isaiah 48, 22 says, there's no peace for the wicked. Do you not have peace? It doesn't matter if you're going through trials or difficulties. Even in the midst of the storms, our Jesus is with us. Our peace, our God is with us. It doesn't matter what sickness you go through. But even in the midst of everything, if you do not have peace, it's a good sign that you're going through some kind of a sinful life that you need to get rid of this morning. Going to the next slide. Sixth, suffering and consequences. A man reaps what he sows. Sows to please their flesh. From the flesh will reap destruction. We hear about David. We hear about Solomon. David was a good man of God. Right? Every time he messed up, he confessed. Right? Right? God forgive him. But what happened? He put that DNA of that sin into every son that was out there. Solomon, all the sons, had that same kind of sinful life that David felt. So it's a good reminder for us, even when we as Christians ask forgiveness from God, God is able and just. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but there is a consequence. Are you putting that sinful DNA into your kid's life? Every time you slander, every time you talk behind someone's back, your kids are listening to you. Are you putting that that spirit, that evil DNA into your kid's life, you will be accountable for that. So it is a good reminder to ask forgiveness. We continue doing that spiritual blindness. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, and not just unbelievers, believers too. We are sometimes the reason why we do not understand we are sinful is because the things of this world, the worldliness has blinded us. We don't realize our own faults. We don't cry out to God. Every time you pray, you're not shedding tears. Why? Because that's some kind of a blindness. So it is time for us to get rid of that blindness. The Holy Spirit is reminding if there's any kind of a blindness, take that communion properly. When you just sit in God's presence, ask not just one time, but do it for the ever so that you never do those sins again. Bondage to sin, addiction. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, John 8, 3, 4, 8, 34. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Trapping them in destructive patterns and behaviors. If there are repetitive sins, there is a spirit behind it. If, there are, if you're going through addictions, alcohol. Many of our kids, they, they think that they're in the college. No one is going to see them at church. But their friends who are drinking alcohol with them, they're working with someone else, they're meeting someone else from our church, and we get to hear a lot of our kids doing a lot of things at, at colleges that our parents, what we ourselves, we never hear in church. Why? Because we think we're doing it away from people, but eventually God knows everything. So do not let yourself trapped in any kind of addictions. Addictions to alcohol, smoking, any kind of watching, right? We'll get into that. Destruction and ruin. Eternal judgment, right? I'm going to go fast because there's a few things to cover. Um, sins our youth or many of our Christians struggle with. Disobedience. Watching R-rated TVMA shows, pornography. If you're bored, good sign that when you say you're bored, you're stressed, you have self-pity, you don't think yourself as good looking or you don't think that you are right there, you're never smart, you're never self-pity of any kind, anger, laziness, you want to escape all the trials or difficulties, whatever you're going through, all these things that the devil picks up on and that can lead to a lot of 
hidden door sins, right? The Bible, the verse that, there's a verse that it talks about, I'm going to talk about this, Matthew 5, 28. Whoever looks at a woman or a man wrongly has committed adultery. Proverbs 18, 1 says, whoever isolates himself, ESV version, seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. The devil is trying to tell you to close doors, get yourself alone. If you are tending for any of those things, don't put yourself alone. Don't cl stay in closed doors. Stay in public. Help, ask for help from God, right? I'm not going to go through others disrespecting parents, authority, gender, identity. God created mankind in his own image. Addictions, peer pressure, trusting people than God. Proverbs 4.14 says, do not set foot on the path of the wicked. Do not go with people who are going to bully you. Do not go with people who are, you know, who are racist, who you think you need to be cool like them. You're not supposed to be with them. Gossip. Okay, one thing that the Holy Spirit reminded me was about hearing gossip. Most of us don't say gossip, right? We don't call anyone because we, left, we don't want to leave a proof that we actually are spreading so what most of us do is we allow someone else to tell you what the gossip is, right? Let's read Proverbs 26, 22. Proverbs 26, 20, um, 22, if you can put it up there. The words of a whisper are like delicious morsels, food. They go down into the inner parts of the body. So every time you hear gossip, you allow someone to speak into you. The spirit that's in them, you're allowing it to get into your hearts. So if that is the door for the enemy to get into your lives, shut it right down. Lord, we want to confess, oh God, the many times we have allowed phone calls, other people to speak into our lives about others. We want to shut it down this morning. Lord, as we continue, spiritual inheritances. We have this treasure in jars. It talks about coming back to the promise, right? This is what God has called us to. When we confess and get rid of all of our sins, God is going to build treasures in our earthen vessels, right? This all-surpassing power is from God. That's, it talks about 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. You know the, the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We all need to have these, right? Um, you know the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to give you examples before and maybe we, we'll, we'll get in. Sinners who did not, did not confess and repent in the past. Saul, King Saul is one of them, right? Solomon was one of them. When he messed up, he kept marrying. He had the wisdom. He knew what God wanted, but he never asked for the will of God. Should I marry that person? Right, David also, right, David also, whenever he sinned, every time he took a wife, he did not ask God, God, should I marry that person? Do you want me to marry? But every time he was going to war, he needed God. So he was inquiring of the God. But David got really confessed and God saved him for it. But the consequences was none of his spiritual sons or physical sons, none of them made it. What are your consequences that you're leaving behind for your children? Sinners who got saved and did not sin after. The Bible doesn't say that Paul sinned. I'm taking that when he met Jesus. He probably had small sins. He kept confessing, but the Bible doesn't mention it, right? But Paul, our perfect example is Jesus who never sinned, right? We need to be like Jesus, no one else. All right. You guys know about all the spiritual inheritances. Next slide, please. Right? Prophecy, serving, teaching, wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, apostles, prophecy, pastors, healing, helping, administration, tongues. Everything we do. All that the Holy Spirit provides us. All that we do in church. Everything is a blessing. Right? All of it when we put together. What are we going to do about it? Right? Every time. This is what the Holy Spirit is reminding when we confess, when we come back every week and we, before we take Holy Communion, we know that, okay, we need to take Holy Communion. We need to be sin-free. So we'll confess. 
but we do it over and over again. What, what happens? Every time we confess, we're going back. To, I was talking to my class in, in, in Sunday school today, just like a seed that has to die and, to, and grow again. Every time we confess by the blood of Jesus, by the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross, we are set free of those sins, but we are crucifying Jesus over and over again. But we're going to start over, right? Next slide, please. This is my last slide, and we'll pray. Every, the slide before, right, when we saw every promise, every, every gift, every, every ministry that's out there, what the Holy Spirit reminded me was like, think of it as, 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 a, as a crown that's not just over your head, but as a shield that's over our bodies. When we get into that true nature of being dead to ourself, dead to sin, and we're not looking to sin at all, that's when the Holy Spirit truly transforms us, builds us, bonds every gift, every promise that he has given us, every experience, every life experience that we have gone through, builds us into a big structure that we can truly get out of our limitedness and truly become a blessing for the kingdom of God. I will uh, invite the, the worship team to come forward, please. This is the vision that God gave we are not looking to just confess. We're looking to build onto the promises, the gifts that God already has given us. Build more, ask more, and grow so that God can truly use us. Not just to come sit in church, but to go bring millions to the kingdom of God. To be billionaires and give for the ministry. To do miracles and everything that God has called us to do do not shorten yourself this morning as i'm praying i will invite you all to before we stand up to kneel down if you want to or just close your eyes as i'm praying as the holy spirit is leading there is a promise for all of us to go above and beyond that we can ever think of if we allow truly for God to work in our lives, if we confess sins completely today and be dead to them completely forever so that God can build us like this and truly wherever we go, the influence of God will go before us. The power of God will go before us. Every, every, every impossible thing will become possible for us through the kingdom of God, through the glory of God, through the anointing of the God. Lord, we come in your presence this morning. We invite the Holy Spirit right now, O oh God, to touch and break just as the seed is dead for it to grow. Lord, we acknowledge that we are dead to sin. We are dead to self right now in the name of Jesus. And let us truly grow into the power and anointing and favor and, and your goodness that you have kept for us, O oh God, not for selfish gain, but for the blessing of the kingdom of God, O oh God. Continue to speak to us and guide us, O oh God. Thank you for your goodness, for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray.